Hey, what's going on fish friends? Today I'm going to be going over one of the most common types of algae in the freshwater planted aquarium, brown hair algae, otherwise known as diatomaceous algae, or just straight up diatoms. So how do you know that you have diatomaceous algae in the first place? Well, it's pretty recognizable. If you look at this clump, it's brown, it's stringy, it's strand-like, hence the name brown hair algae. Most other types of algae in the planted tank are gonna be green, sometimes black or gray. There really aren't any other types of algae that grow with this color or in this magnitude. Diatomaceous algae can grow really aggressively. It will appear in your tank in the span of around two days. You'll have none, and then before you know it, it's everywhere. And this usually tends to happen around the two or three week mark of setting up a new aquarium. If you're checking all those boxes, then chances are you do have diatomaceous algae. Why does diatomaceous algae show up in the two to three week mark of setting up an aquarium? And what are some other things that cause it? It helps to understand a little bit about the biology of diatoms in order to understand what causes them. Diatoms are a type of algae that are single-celled. Just like every type of algae, they use photosynthesis to create food for themselves and oxygen as a byproduct. In fact, they're responsible for creating 30% of the oxygen in the atmosphere that we breathe every day. So even though they're an eyesore in the aquarium, they are literally responsible for enabling life as we know it on the planet. The one thing that makes them unique from other types of algae is that they use silica to create their cell walls. Other types of algae use organic compounds like hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon to create fibrous cell walls. Since silica is basically glass, diatoms are essentially creating glass homes around themselves for protection. Since they're really small, it can be hard to see all of the details, but with the right imaging, you can see that they're actually beautiful, ornate creatures. It's kind of crazy to think that these mats of algae are created by tons of individual microscopic organisms that have banded together. Well, sand and granite contribute to silica levels in the water. So now that you know that diatoms need that silica to create their shells, you can understand why Filling up the tank and kicking up all that sand and silica into the water would create a bloom. Good news is that these blooms usually take care of themselves within the span of uh, roughly two weeks and they'll disappear just as quickly as they got there. I don't normally worry about diatomaceous algae taking over my tank and smothering plants and killing everything unless it's really on the extreme end. So I think there's been one or two times where I felt alarmed that there's been so much diatomaceous algae that it basically clogged the plants, didn't allow them to respire or photosynthesize, uh, it just smothered them. And so in cases like that, I'd say you should take uh, some drastic measures and remove as much of it as you can physically. In a case like this, eh, you could probably leave it there and it would take care of itself on its own. but. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the easiest ways to get rid of diatomaceous algae. A toothbrush is really gonna be your best friend when it comes to removing brown hair algae. All you have to do is get it wrapped up and then just start twirling. really impossible to get all of this out um, and like I said it usually does resolve itself on its own so don't kill yourself trying to take all this hair algae or this uh, diatomaceous algae out of the tank just go around scrub it a little bit get the big spots if there's any that are really blocking up some of your plant growth you want to you know pull those out but I also wouldn't go around cutting your plants and um, you know really really trying to kill yourself getting it out you're not gonna win 
You can also use your hands, just get in there and pull those little clumps out. Like I said, don't kill yourself. You're never going to get it all out. And it does eventually resolve itself once the silica levels in the water have leveled out. All right, so the other thing you can do besides physically removing the clumps of diatomaceous algae is to do a big old water change. I'm a firm believer in water changes anyways, but the science behind doing a water change here is that all of those silica levels that are elevated in your water column should get removed when you do a big old water change. But as long as you're careful about refilling the tank and not just slamming water on top of your sand and kicking out a bunch of sediment, then you should have drastically reduced levels of silica in your water, therefore less food for the diatomaceous algae to grow, reducing the diatomaceous algae in your tank. All right, so let's say you've taken some measures to get rid of your diatomaceous algae and it won't go away. You've waited that two week period, even three or four weeks, and your tank is out of the new stage. So why do you still have diatomaceous algae? Chances are it's not a new tank syndrome algae outbreak. Um, it's more likely related to phosphates, silica and nitrate levels in your tank. Chances are they're all going to be elevated. So the way you can deal with that first is you need to think about the root of your problem. Why do you have raised levels of silica in your water? Maybe it's coming from your tap water. You can try using distilled, remineralized or RO remineralized water. You can maybe check at your fish store if they'll test some of those things but maybe your city has some information on your tap water and what's found in it, so you can start there. If you're not doing frequent water changes and your phosphates and nitrates are high, then those could also be contributing. Something else to think about is the outflow of your filter. If it's blasting into the sand, then it's gonna be constantly agitating and kicking up silica, even as the uh, particles of sand or silica rub together, it's gonna be releasing it into the water. So you pretty much have a never ending supply of it. All right, everyone, that's all I got for diatomaceous algae. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like and sub button if you learned anything and feel free to drop a question if you got any in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.